Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here with another Darkroom Experiment. In this video, I want to compare the highly popular Kodak D76 to the now discontinued but much loved Microdoll X. This is a name that has come up quite a bit in my research on other topics. It'll pop up in magazine reviews of cameras, anecdotes from other photographers, stuff like that. I was curious to see if there are any major differences between the two, and if you were as well, stay tuned. For my experiment, I have two containers of Microdoll X. One was in a can, the other in a packet. The can was donated by the real Peter, who also just recently sent me a bunch of film and a Christmas card. Peter has been a very generous contributor to the channel over the years, and I'm very grateful to have his support. The packet I got was at some random thrift haul. For this experiment, I'm going to use both the can and the packet, and you may be asking why. The reason is they are both expired and I can't be sure which one, if either, is still usable. Now in my personal experience, the developers that are stored in cans do very well over time. I've used several cans of Dectal with fantastic results. Packets though don't seem to be as reliable, at least it's not perceived that way, especially ones that are made from paper. This one even has a stain on the back. Not a great sign. The plan was to mix up both batches and see if there was any difference between the two in order to answer this question. I think the logic here is that if they look the same, they're likely both still good. I am not 100% sure when these expired. The bottom of the can is stamped U7204 and A1092. I looked at some other cans I have for Dectal, and if either is an expiry date, it's likely the U code, so April 1972. The packet doesn't seem to provide anything though, other than a price tag of $4.50 from Robinson's Camera Store. Looks like something out of the 80s, but I'm just guessing. I think we can safely assume that the can is older though. To mix the Microdoll X, I started a sous vide bath to get 2 liters of water to the required 125 Fahrenheit. D76 needs to be mixed between 122 and 131 Fahrenheit, so basically the same. I have a fresh batch I made the week before. I started by labeling my bottles with the date and if it was for the can or packet. All I had was 500 milliliter bottles on hand, even though each batch will be a quart or 946 milliliters. No big deal though. I opened up the can of Microdoll X using a can opener and everything inside looked good. The powder hadn't browned and nothing had seeped inside over the years. Once my water was ready, I mixed it together and there was a slight coloring to the developer, but the instructions said there would be. I transferred it to my storage bottles and moved on to the packet. Even though the packet's contents look the same, you can see when I mix it up, it's much darker. After adding it to its storage bottles, you can definitely see the difference. To test the developers, I used my Pentax 6.7 and a roll of Triax. The idea here is I take the same photo for the entire roll and then in the dark, cut it into three sections. If I don't manage to get even cuts in the dark, at least I have a minimum of one frame for each batch. In the past, I have shot city skylines for my tests and also shot some random things indoors. These days I think an indoor setup is more accurate and the lighting is 100% controllable. Even on a cloudy day, the lighting can vary from frame to frame. I used this Phrenology Bust and a continuous LED studio light. I set this 6-7 on a tripod and used a handheld meter to determine exposure. Once I shot the roll, I placed the cut portions into these developing tanks and I was ready to develop. While gearing up for this experiment, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out the best comparison for dilution. Should I compare each at full strength, or both at 1 plus 1 or 1 plus 3? Ultimately, I decided to compare their most popular dilutions. For D76, that's 1 plus 1, and Microdoll X, that's 1 plus 3. I don't think there's a perfect comparison here, but what I asked myself was, if one of you came across some old stock of Microdoll X, how would you use it? I know I didn't want to waste half my supply by using it at full strength, and neither should you. Using the common 1 plus 1 for D76 just made sense at that point. 
Maybe you disagree, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. So I developed the strips, paying close attention that each was developed at the same temperature, using a combination of room temperature and microwaved water with the assistance of an online calculator, I got each dilution to 68.1 Fahrenheit. Why the 0.1? Because I warmed up the first batch too much just slightly and had to make sure that the other two matched it for consistency. Those of you who have used Microdoll X back in the day know that it's a slow burn. A roll of Triax takes 17 minutes to develop at 1 plus 3. Even if I did decide to use it at full strength, it would still be 9 minutes and 15 seconds. For comparison, D76 at full strength is 6 minutes and 45 seconds. Though at 1 plus 3, D76 actually takes longer at 20 minutes. Once my negatives were developed, I hung each up on a labeled clip to ensure I wouldn't confuse them. When they dried, I cut a single frame from each one. I clipped the packet sample in the upper left corner and the can sample in the upper right corner to make sure I would never get them mixed up. Scanning these negatives for inspection is a difficult task because the scanning software wants to make adjustments and if I reset and turn everything off, it doesn't even look right. The best solution I came up with was to scan the negatives in pairs as a single image and just do some basic levels. The first pairing I did was with the packet sample on the left and the can sample on the right. They look identical to me, so I would need the eyedropper to check for differences. I first checked this highlight here on the cheek. Sampling and moving around looks like the brightness varies from 94% to about 98%. When I checked the can sample, it was basically the same result. A different this slight could easily be a variation in the shutter speed. Next I checked the eye, and again, very similar. Finally I checked the tip of the nose shadow, and again, so similar it barely registers. This is actually fantastic, because it not only means that the expired packet held up just as well as the can, even though it was slightly discolored, it also confirms that the can is good too, because it's unlikely these two samples kept in totally different conditions would have deteriorated the exact same way. My second pairing was with the D76 and the can sample. The D76 on the left and the can on the right. I have to admit, I wasn't prepared for this, but the two samples look very similar as well, though the D76 looks like it has brighter highlights. Here's a sample of the poster in the background in a highlighted area. The D76 looks brighter. In this other clipping of the back wall, it looks like the Microdoll X has deeper blacks. It actually also looks sharper, but that could just be a difference in the way the negative is laying on the scanning bed. It's hard to tell for sure. What does this all tell us? While it might seem like there's nothing, there's actually a substantial find here. First off, as mentioned, whether you have a packet or a can of Microdoll X, you can probably use it with confidence. The next thing is that overall D76 OnePlus One and Microdoll X OnePlus Three are going to give you pretty similar results. Lastly, if you want slightly brighter highlights, go with D76. If you want darker blacks, go with Microdoll X. The bottom line is that you could probably alter one to look like the other in post anyways. The moral of this story is that you have to look at these very close up to tell the difference. So it doesn't really matter in the greater scheme of things. If you have a great photo, it's going to render beautifully in either. I'm not sure I would go out of my way to find new old stock of Microdoll X. The developing time is a bit of a turnoff, but on the other hand, it will stretch further with that dilution. Bottom line is, if you come across some, you can develop with a fair amount of confidence. If you want to try a Microdoll X equivalent, buy Legacy Pro's Mic X. I have yet to test it, but it's supposed to be very similar. Well, folks, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this little test of mine. Did I miss anything? What experiment should I do next? Let me know in the comments section. And if you like what I do around here, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I have a lot of thoughtful perks I think you're going to enjoy. These experiments are a niche in a niche in a niche, so they don't do as well as my camera reviews and photography history videos. So please show me your appreciation by signing up. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and until next time, stay classic. Classic.